welcome to Children's Church at Second City Church. I'm Ms. Charisse, and I'm going to be sharing some scripture with you today. But before we get started, let's start with a moment of prayer when we talk to God. So we want to have a serious moment. We're going to bow our head and close our eyes. We're going to speak to the Lord right now. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for waking us up, and we thank you for this moment we have to hear your word. Amen. So today I'm going to be reading Psalm 23 from the book of Psalms. It's found in the Old Testament of the Bible. And I'm gonna start with verse one, reading from the International Children's Bible Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me to calm water. He gives me new strength for the good of his name, for he leads me on paths that are right. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your shepherd's staff comfort me. You pre prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You pour oil of blessing on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. So that was Psalm 23. So in that verse, the author was writing, Comparing God like a shepherd. A shepherd is someone who takes care of his sheep. He protects them. He gives them food and water. He keeps them safe. So in the same way, God is our shepherd and he protects all of, all of us. He gives us what we need. He created each and every one of us. So he knows exactly what we need. He knows our gifts and our strengths and our weaknesses. So God can provide all that we need because he is all knowing. So remember that the Lord is our shepherd and he will lead us, protect us, and guide us. So we're going to have another moment of prayer where we're going to pray. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for being a loving Heavenly Father and being our shepherd. We thank you for guiding us and protecting us and leading us and providing all that we need. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. This song is called Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus died for all the children. All the children of the world Red, brown, yellow, black, and white They are precious in His sight Jesus died for all the children of the world Jesus rose for all the children All the children of the world Red, brown, yellow, black, and white They are precious in His sight Jesus rose for all the children of the world This song is called, God is So Good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. called Deep and Wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep Yeah. 
there's a fountain flowing deep and wide For you and me and all mankind There's a fountain flowing deep and wide
Alright, hi, this is Roland Fisher, lead pastor of Second City Church, and we hope that you're well. Welcome to our online service. We hope you leave today encouraged, full of faith, and ready to take the kingdom of God wherever you may go. Before we get started today, let's consider this our lobby moment where we have an opportunity to get to know one another. If you would, please share your name and maybe from where you might be worshiping with us. In just a moment here, you'll see a countdown letting us know that worship is about to begin, and you can prepare your heart during that time. But we just wanted you to know that we're so glad that you've chosen to join us today. And once again, welcome. Welcome Second City Church. You know, God is good and he's doing so many amazing things that we don't even know sometimes. Starting with the sacrifice on the cross, all the way to his involvement in our daily lives. So let's recognize him this morning. So we invite you to sing with us this first song, Lord, You Are Good. Lord, you are good.
something higher. fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head and I will say of the goodness of God all my you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able 
I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. darkest night you were close like no father I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life cause all my life you have been faithful and all Welcome to Second City Church. My name is Anthony, and I am an intern here at Second City. Now, before we get started with our announcements today, please take a moment to invite someone to attend our live stream right now. Please click on that link and share it with a friend. Also, during our service, we have live prayer counselors standing by. So if you need prayer for anything, please click that link, and it will connect you directly to someone, and they can pray with you. Now, our vision here at Second City Church is threefold. Christ, community, culture. We are here to worship Jesus Christ, share life in community with one another, and to be empowered to impact our culture by bringing the kingdom of God to every sphere of influence. So there's three practical ways you can do this. First is Christ. At the end of today's service, you're going to see a chat prompt to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So click this link so we can connect with you and help you get started to walk out this new life in Jesus. The second way is community. If you haven't already, please get connected to one of our community groups. Go to our website and find a time and a place that will work for you. We have them meeting all over the city, various times and places. The third thing is culture. Navigate over to our website and click the culture tab to find all the ways that you can engage our culture with the good news of Jesus Christ and to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Now our first announcement is membership class today is canceled. So please don't show up. It's canceled today. We'll have a membership class next month on June 13th at 1130 a.m. So June 13th is when our next membership class will be. Now, Cultural Shock discussions will continue today at 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. here at the church offices. We're going to be talking about the environment, 
Now, if you haven't come to one of these classes, it's okay. Feel free to come anyway today and enjoy the discussion with a bunch of friends. It would be really fun. Now, our ministry boot camp is scheduled to take place this week on Tuesday and Wednesday, May 11 and 12th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. So if you feel called at all to grow in your leadership and effectiveness at Second City Church, please consider attending this very special Zoom training with our sister church, Kings Park International. Together, we will learn from seasoned ministry leaders how to be better ministers of the gospel. Baby dedication class will take place next Sunday on May 16th. Now, Judges 13.8 says this, Then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us and teach us what we are to do with the child who will be born. So if you'd like to publicly dedicate your child to the Lord, please join the baby dedication group on Church Center or contact Pastor Cole to join this special event. Leadership 215 will take place Wednesday, June 9th, throughout the entire summer, every Wednesday, June 9th to August 25th at 7 to 8.30 p.m. Now, Leadership 215 is an ongoing course developed and taught by every nation leaders from around the world to help establish theological foundations for anyone. That's right, anyone can come to this event. So anyone who wants to minister the gospel for any sphere of influence, no matter where you're working in life, you're welcome to come join us. And the first course is going to be this summer, and it's going to focus on leadership. So let's go to a moment of tithe and offerings. The scripture says in 1 Kings 10, 4 through 5, And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more breath within her. So just like King Solomon, let's bring our best offerings to the house of the Lord, knowing that he will draw others to himself. So Father God, thank you right now for the tithes and offerings that are going to be given to the church. Lord, I just pray that this, this money will be used to advance your purposes, your kingdom, and that many will be drawn unto yourself. Father, I just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we're going to move into a time of worship with the Word of God. All right, again, we're so glad that you've chosen to join us on this very special day. And once again, a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. We honor you for your love, your constant care, your devotion, your nurturing of the next generation as we pray for them to be molded and shaped into men and women of God that God himself has called them to be. And so today, as we finish this last portion of our series, which has been entitled Reemerge, we're going to actually graft in and really see how even mothers of the past have helped to so purposefully and so intentionally shape those who would ultimately shape the church of Jesus Christ at large in their times. And so our title of this message today is A Return to Faithfulness, that even as we're looking to re-emerge out of our past season of trial and re-emerge with Christ into His plans and purposes for our lives, we've got to know that He's a God of faithfulness. And so our focus statement will be this today, that you will re-emerge with Christ when you understand Him as the God of all faithfulness. You will re-emerge with Christ as you understand Him as the God of all faithfulness. To do so, we're going to talk about this in three parts today. We're going to talk first about a cry for faithfulness. Secondly, we're going to talk about our need. And then finally, we're going to talk about God's faithfulness. And so before we do anything else, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word to us today. And we thank you that through it, you once again reaffirm the fact that you are the God of all faithfulness. And God, would you please help us to re-emerge with Christ as we not only understand and embrace you as the God of faithfulness, but then we begin to model our lives after that faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's open our Bibles today to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 
And here we have the Apostle Paul who was speaking to his young disciple Timothy, who long after uh, Paul the Apostle would be martyred by the Emperor Nero, would continue the gospel ministry of the Lord that Timothy had saw modeled for him by the Apostle Paul and would continue to spread throughout the Roman Empire during his time, which would ultimately reach us by multiplication today. And so we're going to see the cry for faithfulness and why faithfulness that came from not only Timothy's natural family, but also his spiritual family was so important to fulfilling the purposes of God. It is, in fact, a cry for faithfulness that has eternal impact. So let's read today in 2 Timothy chapter 1. It says this, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. And so we see, ultimately, in this context here, Paul the Apostle was imprisoned. And ultimately, he would be martyred by the evil king or emperor Nero, who would be a great persecutor of Christians during the early life of the church. And Paul's in prison, but he has this relationship, according to first, uh, 2 Timothy 1, with this young man named Timothy. And though he wasn't his biological father, T Paul had such a deep relationship with Timothy, this young man, Timothy, that he called him my beloved child. And through that relationship, Paul established a measure of faithfulness in his relationship towards Timothy that would ultimately have eternal impact. We know that though the Apostle Paul was ultimately martyred, the gospel of God, the grace of God, and the expansion of the kingdom of God would continue through men that he, men and women that Paul the Apostle left behind, who he had invested in, who he had taken time to disciple, people that he had intentionally given his not only knowledge to, but his love, his care, his prayers, his concern, ultimately his faithfulness. And this cry for faithfulness ultimately had an eternal impact through the life of Timothy. And Paul says this and exemplifies this when he said, I thank my God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as constantly... Not just once when you hear about a matter, but constantly. He was praying night and day, night and day, for this young man, Timothy. And because of Paul's impact, this fatherly impact in Timothy's life, 
long after Paul was gone, this cry for faithfulness was met by the Apostle Paul towards Timothy. And so the power and the message of the gospel could continue to spread long after Paul expired. Now, this was important because we know that as the scripture continues to write about both Timothy, Timothy's mother and grandmother, that they were also women of faith. We also know from the book of Acts that Paul the Apostle knew Timothy in a fatherly role, but Timothy's father was a Greek. And though we know that his mother and grandmother, Timothy's mother and grandmother had faith, there's no mention of the fact that Timothy's father, in fact, had faith. And so, as it does for many men in our generation or young women in our generation, that lack of spiritual guidance leaves a vacancy, a vacancy in this young, man's, this young man Timothy's life. But by the grace of God, this man Paul comes alongside of him and expresses a faithful, fatherly, shaping heart towards Timothy. And he said, I'm constantly praying for you night and day. And though your father may not have taken up the mantle to mold and shape you in the things and the purposes of God, Paul the Apostle says, I'm going to come along and in faithfulness answer that cry and actually be one who helps shape you spiritually through faithfulness. And I'm going to be praying for you, investing in you constantly through my prayers night and day for you so that you can in fact be the man of God that you are called to be. And I'm here to tell you today that you are, many of you, beneficiaries of a parent or somebody like the Apostle Paul in your life who invested in you at some point to bring you either to the knowledge of God or to actually invest in you after you had the knowledge of God to mold and shape you into the man or, God, or woman of God that you were called to be. And when you've had that benefit and the experience, the goal is, is that you would pass it forward. You'd pay it forward. You would pass it on and ultimately be a part of the great commission of Jesus Christ. That the things according to 2 Timothy 2.2 2, that Paul would eventually say that you've heard in the presence of many witnesses, you need to entrust to reliable men and women who would also be qualified to teach others. You see, that's how the cry for faithfulness is met and the kingdom of God ultimately expands even during times of trial. You see, Paul was writing this letter to Timothy during his trial, but he said, I'm going to reemerge with Christ. I know one day in the resurrection, but prior to doing that, I've got to leave my stamp on history by being faithful to this young man, Timothy. Though he didn't have a natural father who raised him up in the way, I can be a spiritual father to him and invest in him the things of God that long after I'm gone, will see the kingdom of God continue to manifest and also advance through this young man, Timothy's life. It was Paul meeting a cry for faithfulness. But it wasn't just the apostle Paul. You see, we can never underestimate the value of what's going on in the home itself. And we see that though Paul had a great impact on Timothy's life and ultimately helped to bring him into the call of God for his life, ultimately it didn't start with Paul, but it started with Timothy's grandmother Eunice, I'm sorry, grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. That's what he said in verse 5. Paul said, I'm reminded, Timothy, of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. And so by the time Paul, according to the books of, book of Acts, actually met Timothy, Timothy was a young man who was well spoken of by the other disciples. And Paul, hearing of this young man, wanted to take him along with him on his missionary journeys so that he could be a part of what God was doing and actually reemerge with God, reemerge with Christ to actually spread his kingdom throughout that Roman Empire. But here's the thing. He was prepared to do that because of not Paul's faithfulness, but because of the faithfulness of Eunice and Lois. 
and the faithfulness that this grandmother and mother had on Timothy were so powerful that ultimately it helped shape the entire history of the early church. And what you need to understand is there is a cry for faithfulness coming out of your home. If you're a parent, whether your child is a toddler, an adolescent, whether your child is a teenager, whether your child is grown and out of the home, there is a cry for faithfulness that mothers and fathers alike would have such an impact on their children that they would have a molding effect, a shaping effect on those who would come after them that it would ultimately shape shape their point of history forward for the kingdom of God. And if you are not a natural parent today, let me tell you that just like Paul the Apostle has no record of having natural born children, you too are called to answer the cry to faithfulness and rise up to help be a spiritual father or a spiritual mother to this generation to help them know the God of all heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, his son who he sent, and actually help them propel forward in the kingdom and the things of God. It is the faithfulness of God that helps them understand this. And when you are faithful to this generation, just as God has called you to be, then an entire generation can be turned upside down for the Lord and God's kingdom. That's what Paul was saying here in this parting letter to Timothy. He said, I heard the cry for faithfulness. I came and I preached to you. And I didn't just build on top of what your mother and grandmother showed you, but I affirmed you in certain things. What things did Paul the apostle affirm Timothy in? Well, it says in verse eight, he affirmed him not to be ashamed. He said, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, meaning the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Paul said previously that the gospel is the power of salvation for those who believe, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile, everybody else. Because God, what? Even though we have times of suffering, Paul in his faithfulness to this young man was saying, let me help you contextualize suffering. Let me contextual, help you contextualize this trial that you just went through. You see, there are young people now who the pandemic was their graduation experience from high school or middle school. There, there are many people who are coming out of college in the pandemic into a whole new world, a new normal. And they're looking for people, men and women of God, who've gone before them, hear their need for direction and stability and even a contextualization of the suffering that they just endured. And they need people who are going to speak to them the goodness of God, the purposes of God as they go forward. And this is what Paul did for Timothy and his faithfulness towards him. He said, don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. He's saying, listen, you might see that I'm suffering right now, but that doesn't change who God is. It does not change who God is or what his eternal purposes are. Why? Because my momentary, my light and momentary trials, just as the Apostle Paul wrote about in Corinthians, he said, my light and momentary trials, even in this imprisonment, are in preparing for me an eternal glory which far surpasses them all. And as long as I get this word out, not only to those who are outside this prison, but those who are within. And in this prison, I have the opportunity to testify to governors and kings and rulers and those I wouldn't previously have had an exposure to or contact with except for this suffering. I know that if you can understand my suffering, you'll better be able to understand your own. And Paul's in his faithfulness explaining these things to this young man, Timothy, that God's kingdom endures. He said, Don't, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He said that the same power that you see me working in and operating in, despite the season of trial that I'm coming out of and that I'm calling you into, you can endure it too by the power of God. Because you see my faithfulness to the Lord and because people will see your faithfulness to the Lord, they too will be bolstered to be faithful in their walks with God as well. Paul said, 
God, this God saved us and called us to a holy calling. And that's ultimately what's at stake, right? That their calling would ultimately be at stake. They need to hear and see that somebody can stand in faithfulness, that God's going to be faithful towards them and that they for, therefore they can stand in faithfulness even in the midst of suffering by the same grace that God has towards them, towards them and therefore fulfill what? Fulfill the holy calling, the holy calling, the set apart calling that God has upon their lives, not because of their works, but because of God's own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. You see, it's a cry for faithfulness that this generation has, which is no different than the cry for faithfulness that Timothy's generation had, and that the apostle Paul was willing to give even during his times of trial, testifying to the Lord and his grace. And so what we're ultimately seeing is that it's not just a cry for faithfulness, but the, the, the times of suffering, they basically expose our need. They expose our need in the Lord. And it's what Vivek Murthy, the former Surgeon General of the United States, actually told us that over this past year, the pandemic has really brought us into somewhat of a social recession. A social recession that's led to loneliness and a loneliness that's actually had impact on our health. I'm about to read a book called The Lonely Century. I can't wait to share with you some of the uh, quotes and some of the uh, findings that that research uh, really opens up for us. But what this past year of suffering has shown us is that we are in a deep period of disconnectedness, loneliness, and need. And so much so that great organizations like Starbucks, as we come out of the pandemic, are basically saying that they were built for literally this moment, the great human reconnection that's needed. And as more and more people are getting the vaccine and returning to some semblance of normalcy in life, what we're having to do to reemerge with Christ is almost go through a type of social rehabilitation. Because all of the things that we were talking about that were produced by the Apostle Paul's faithfulness towards Timothy and the grandmother uh, and uh, mother Lois and Eunice's uh, 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 faithfulness towards Timothy and helping mold and shape, and they were all produced by a answering of not just a call to faithfulness, but they were meeting a need for relationship, for human interaction. And as we're coming out of the pandemic, one of the things that we need to reemerge with Christ with is a return to faithfulness because we have a great need for that human connection to be able to move forward in the things and purposes of God. Because ultimately, it's about relationship with God and relationship with one another. That's what God's trying to bring out of us a healthy dynamic in relationship with him and relationship with one another. But we almost have muscles that have been atrophied, atrophied in the faithfulness that we have towards that social commitment. Why? Because for the past year, what have what we been doing? We've been watching church online. What have we been doing besides that? We only go out to pick up the orders that we had delivered to us. What do we do? We mostly, we, we have atrophied muscles in terms of effort in going out to experience even life as we know it and therefore have been disconnected. Though we've had FaceTime, though we've been able to Skype or, you know, or, or, or Zoom connect calls with people, it obviously takes more effort to reconnect with people, not only outside of the home, but on a committed and frequent and consistent level. And to, for us to reemerge with Christ unto that 
holy calling that God has for us, what we need to do is understand once again that we need to reinvent ourselves in faithfulness. In this new world that we find ourselves in, we need to reinvent our, ourselves in faithfulness. And we're learning how to allow Christ to redefine the six basic needs that every human being has and cannot live without. The need, the need for meaning, the need for satisfaction, the need for hope, the need for identity, the need for freedom, and the need for justice. All of these things have been brought up over this past year of suffering, but these are the things that have been exposed as needs, but they can only be fully met if we're willing to, like the Apostle Paul, meet with people in a return to faithfulness, answering that cry for faithfulness, meeting Christ in his purposes. And many of us want to wait for the ideal circumstances before we reemerge and begin faithfully committing to working out those muscles again. But it's like an old Chinese proverb said, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. And what we see is that if we're going to come back to a place of thriving in God. And I love what Pastor Cole um, uh, has mentioned many times before. He said, you have to survive before you thrive. That's what Pastor Cole said. You have to survive before you thrive. And many of us feel like over this past year, I just survived. But guess what? This is the point of reemerging with Christ. God wants to bring you back to a place of thriving in the gospel. But how do you thrive? How do you thrive? Once you hear the cry for faithfulness and you understand your need, how do you thrive? Well, you, under, you thrive by understanding God's faithfulness. And when you understand God's faithfulness, then you see that God himself is the example. The only reason any of us are still here doing as well as we are is because of God's faithfulness towards us. Why do I say that? I only say that because of what King David said in Psalm 138. In Psalm 138, King David was actually giving praise to God. And he said this in Psalm 138. He said, I give thanks, you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, the little g gods, meaning the rulers of the earth, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness. So that even during our trial, God was loving and faithful towards us. For God, you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth and they sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord, for though the Lord is on high, is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, see, this is the point. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you, God, because of your faithfulness, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. And here we go, verse 8. The Lord himself will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Therefore, do not forsake the work of your hands. And when we know that it's God's faithfulness towards us that has kept us, we give him praise. And when we know that it's God's faithfulness towards us that has strengthened us, we give him thanks. But we don't just stop there, but then we begin to model our own lives after the same faithfulness that God has shown towards us. And that is the very essence and nature of covenant. The reason that God was faithful towards you is because he made a covenant with you through Jesus Christ, his son. That's what the apostle Paul was reaffirming in his disciple Timothy. He said, God called you not because of the good things that you'd done, but because of his own own glory and goodness expressed in his son, Christ Jesus. And now that God's shown himself faithful towards you, God wants you to return in faithfulness towards him. But faithfulness in what way? 
faithfulness in terms of that which you find yourself devoted to. And that's what we see in the book of Acts, where the early church on the day of Pentecost, even after Jesus' own suffering on the cross for the sin of humanity, taking the wrath of God on himself so that we would no longer have to die, but that we could live and proclaim the works of the Lord after receiving forgiveness of our sins because of his resurrection from the dead. It said the church received this message, they were baptized, and then they had a life of devotion. And that word devotion can otherwise be substituted for faithfulness. They said God's been faithful towards us, therefore we too are going to be faithful towards him. In what way? Acts chapter 2, 42 says it this way. They, meaning the early church, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, meaning the word of God and the fellowship meaning a shared life, that we have to have a deci- make a decision to be faithful in our shared life together, to the breaking of bread, honoring the broken body and spilled blood of the Lord, and the sacrament of communion, and the prayers, giving ourselves, just like the Apostle Paul did, praying night and day for Timothy. These, the church was devoted to prayers, saying, God, together we're crying out, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it says, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, meaning they came to the place of worship in a faithful, devoted manner and breaking bread in their homes, meaning they were enjoying the company of one another. They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And what did God do in his faithfulness as a result? As they made their offerings of faithfulness, it said the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And we see, so we see that God started it all in faithfulness. God, even during our period of trial, we are here today because of his faithfulness towards us. And we give him praise. And because we give him praise, we also say, God, I acknowledge your goodness, but I'm going to model my life after your goodness. And God, I'm going to return to faithfulness that I might reemerge with Christ, being devoted to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and to prayer. The coming together in worship with the rest of the body and doing what? Believing you to add to our number daily those who are being saved. Because ultimately, God, you've made a pact with us. And so, God, we return it with making a pact with you. And that's the acronym I'd like us to end with based on this biblical model today. That as we look to reemerge with Christ, we had reemerge with a pact with God. P. um, basing this pact on the covenant he's made with us, the P stands for the promises of God. God's promises towards his people. That is why we're able to reemerge with Christ. The A, the allegiance we pledge back to him, saying, God, you've made been so good to us in your son, Christ Jesus, we're making an allegiance back to you to be devoted to the things which you yourself care about. C, to commitments we make to one another. Making commitments, not just being flighty, coming when we want, when we like, when doing what we want, when we want, but instead saying, God, if you're building something, I want to be a part. And I know that my part is indispensable for what you want to build. That in fact, the body of Christ grows and builds itself up in love as each part, not some parts, but each part does its work. And then finally, how the T. We make a pact with our time, our talent, and our treasure to the common purpose, I'm sorry, person and cause of Christ. And as we have a return to faithfulness in this way, expressing the covenant that God himself has made with us, then God himself will once again do his work. 
He will once again form and shape men and women like the young disciple Timothy by the efforts made by not only people in the home where it should all begin, but by mothers and fathers in the faith who are also pouring out their lives in faithfulness, answering the cry for faithfulness, meeting the needs that people have and bringing them to God's feet, his faithfulness, so that they might be transformed by the work and power of the word of God and person of the Holy Spirit. And so as we lead this series today, let's reemerge with Christ, understanding our place today as a result of God's faithfulness towards us. And then additionally, modeling our lives going forward together in the faithfulness that he himself has called us to in Jesus name. Amen. And so let's begin to end today by actually giving everybody an opportunity to pray. I want to start by praying for my brothers and sisters. And really, if you've been in a place where you've come out of trial, but you, you, you really haven't known the faithfulness of God or acknowledged the faithfulness of God expressed towards you, but now you want to today, like David, be, have your heart turned to worship, to have a renewing of your mind where you say, God, I'm here because of your faithfulness towards me, but I need your help in giving you the worship that you're due so that I might in fact have the confidence that David had that you yourself will fulfill your purpose for me, that you're not gonna abandon the works of your hands. If that's you, where you are today, I wanna to start by praying for you, my brothers and sisters, that God would strengthen you with that great confidence in, of his faithfulness towards you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters, and I pray that you would give them great hope and confidence today as they come out of this season of trial, that whatever they've experienced, Father, we know that you have loved them. We know that in the midst of suffering, you've looked after them, that we know that God, even they're here today because you've provided for them. And God, we pray that that acknowledgement would uh, be awakened in their hearts. And not only that, but great joy and thankfulness would come out of them. God, we pray that in going forward and looking to reemerge with you, they would not go with a spirit of fear for the future, but they would have the spirit of God, which is one of love, power, and self-discipline. That they would activate that power within them to reemerge with Christ, knowing that every day they're taking steps with you in the faithfulness that you have towards them. And God, I pray that they would be so filled with your spirit, so filled with your encouragement, that they would have the grace to express your faithfulness towards others. First in their homes, and then as spiritual fathers and mothers in the world around them, expressing your truth, your gospel, and your goodness to others, to raise up others, disciple them, and transform, see them transformed by your hand for your eternal kingdom to go forth. God, I pray that you would bring your people back into a holy calling by your faithfulness today. God, give them great encouragement as they go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want to pray for anyone who says, you know what? I hear this word, but I've never been transformed by the grace of God. I've never submitted my life to Jesus. And I know that today, if I were to stand before God, God would have to judge me as a sinner. And I would have nothing to stand on except my own record. And I know I'd be guilty before God, breaking his commands, deserving death and hell, but I don't want it. And I want to be reconciled to God today. If that's you and you know that your destiny up to this point was death and hell, but you want the life of Jesus, which Paul spoke about to this young disciple, Timothy, but it still rings true to you today. Would you pray this prayer with me? Almighty God, I admit to you today that I'm a sinner. And I admit to you that though I've been at times left on my own to fend seemingly for myself that God you've always been watching after me and reaching out to me and I admit to you today that you've loved me but that I have not loved you and I'm asking you to forgive me today for my sin I ask you to forgive me for my drunkenness forgive me for my sexual morality forgive me for my lying or my stealing father forgive me for the ways I've broken your commands and I'm asking you to not only forgive me, but I believe that Jesus took it all for me on the cross, the punishment that I deserve. And I believe you raised Jesus from the dead three days later. 
to make me a new creation. Would you forgive me and do that for me today? I proclaim Jesus my Lord, and I ask you to help me reemerge with him to his glory. Amen. Now, the truth is, is, if you prayed that prayer, God said he's made you today a new creation. So would you go with me to our website, secondcitychurch.com slash new life. There you can find not only resources, but next steps of how to walk out this new life in God that you might reemerge with Christ. Additionally, if you're ready to pray with somebody today, click, click on the link below and somebody can stand with you to give you the encouragement that you need. Otherwise, let's go back into worship and on this Mother's Day, honor the one who's been so faithful to us in Jesus' name. All right, as we come back into a time of worship, let's continue focusing on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You know, if you find yourself needing some help with your faith this morning, you know, God is the one that can help. He's the one that saves. He's the one that helps increase our faith. We don't have to do things our own own strength. And so this song is called Mighty to Save, once again, reflecting on his sacrifice, reflecting on all he's done, and all that he will continue to do because we serve a living God.
All right, we hope that you were encouraged by that last worship set and are once again strengthened by the knowledge of God's great love for you. We're going to continue to talk about these things in our community groups this week, so please do. If you've not yet found one, go to our website where you can find both virtual and in-person options. We'll be praying for you this week, so please do let us know how we can be standing with you. And please do think about how you can share this link so that others might be strengthened by the grace of God. Until then, God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. Take care.